Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for participating in the new webinar organized by Johan Cruyff Institute. We will dedicate today's sessions to talk about sport marketing and fan engagement, and we will learn about the process to developing and executing a campaign to connect with the gaming community for a massive blood donation. My name is Gemma, and I will be moderating today's session. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Ziggy Tabaxi, alumnus of Johan Cruyff Academy and co-founder of Two Basics Marketing and Sport. Hi, Ziggy. Hi, good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. And uh, Kevin Laws, responsible for the client lead at the Space Inviders, the Two Basics e-creative agency in gaming. Uh, I think we've lost the, the connection. We cannot see Kevin, but they are there, right? Yes, we are there. I hope you can hear us all. Okay, I can hear you. Okay, Perfect. guys, um, before giving uh, you the floor, I just would like to remind everyone that uh, if any has any technical issues, uh, you can use the chat tab on the top right of your screen and we will be happy to assist you. Please make sure you type your questions to Ziggy and Kevin uh, in the question tab so I don't miss any of your comments. Uh, we will save some time to answer the questions right after the presentation. So Ziggy and Kevin, the floor is now yours. Thank you, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome uh, to this webinar session. We are quite honored to uh, to, to give this session for uh, for the Cryf Institute, and uh, hope to inspire you in this coming 45 uh, minutes. So my name is uh, Sigi Tibachnik. Beside me, Kevin Lowes. He will step in in a few minutes. Um, in 2004, I finished and graduated the John Cryf uh, Academy in Amsterdam. Um, still with Johan there, uh, getting my certificate diploma, so we're really happy with that. And um, eventually we, we, we started off straight away with our agency, uh, agency Two Basics. Then it was really uh, uh, mainly into sports marketing activities, but uh, during this last 17 years we, we, we focused more on social impact. So we thought like, yeah, sport is nice. Um, sport is good, but can sport also help brands to make social impact on different target groups, on different social teams that we uh, found here in the Netherlands or abroad? And um, yeah, about eight years ago, we, we came in contact with um, eSports that was quite new at that time. Uh, it was mainly based in Asia. It was already big over there. Some few events in Europe. And we thought, oh, that's an um, uh, interesting vehicle to use maybe also in looking how you can make social impact there. And uh, we started pioneering. We um, yes, did a, for the first, I think we were the first one in the world who did a university college um, a competition between university and teams in the game League of Legends. Learned really a lot about uh, esports over then. Uh, met a lot of people in the world of esports, and from that point, we 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 did a, a research, a quite big research. And the thing we found it out is that esport is not just one general channel. Um, it's segmented in different games, different people, different target groups. And if you look at it that way, then things pop up you never have seen before. And with the target groups, uh, you also have really different people. So people who play the FIFA game, uh, very popular in Europe for the European people, uh, uh, people, it's a completely different target group uh, if you look to the League of Legends players, also the fans and the people behind those games. So um, if you get these insights and you also see that those fans, those players and the people are involved in those different type of games, they're also very connected in social teams and uh, issues about society and getting further like uh, uh, health or uh, environment. So on that, on that um, issue, we tapped in and um, I would like to introduce you to Kevin because I can only introduce, uh, he's the guy who uh, makes all the concepts and strategy in the world of esports and he's going to take you, I think, on a trip for 40 minutes and inspire you and you hope you get some very nice insight about the way we um, uh, work with esport and use this for several kind of brands. So thank you and Kevin, it, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Sigi, for the introduction. Also, thank you from my side, Gamma, to give us the opportunity to share all the insights we 
we discovered in our uh, uh, blood donation campaigns within an esports and gaming. So today I will talk you through the um, the campaign we did in the Netherlands for the Dutch blood bank, and it was quite uh, it was it was quite a, a new thing to do in the whole gaming uh, area. And also if we take this campaign into the United States, where we also uh, partnered up with one of the biggest esports uh, leagues and teams in the world with the blood centers of. America. Um, so first of all, Sanquin, like Siggy said, it was a couple of years ago that they came to us with a question, uh, not specific on gaming, but they had a really big challenge, uh, how to mobilize youth to become a blood donor. And we were thinking right away, okay, maybe the, the gaming channel is the channel where you as a blood bank have to be to reach the young people. And for everyone, it was quite exciting because if we are traditionally looking at young people, we are thinking about Instagram or now we are uh, looking at TikTok, but the gaming area and the gaming channels are really new for brands and organizations. So it was a really exciting time. Um, but today we will talk you through how we managed uh, um, uh, that campaign. So the challenge for Sanguin uh, a couple of years ago uh, uh, was a very big one because they have over 300,000 donors in the Netherlands. So that sounds quite many, uh, but if you zoom in on their database, it's really interesting to see that over 70% of their uh, uh, donors are females. And uh, so there is a, it's a main group of Dutch men who do not give blood. So that's a really cool opportunity. And also if you look at the age of the database, um, uh, 43 years old is the average age of the existing database. So they were like, okay, can we, come up with some creative campaign where we are really tap in the young people in the Netherlands. So we did a, a great research on the, uh, on the Dutch gaming market and what they say that it's not usual anymore to donate blood. It's really easy to help a social cause by giving money for some NGOs. But if you want to give blood, you have to go outside, you have to go uh, uh, to a local blood center and the most scariest thing you have to do is they put a needle in your arm and they take out blood. So it's not an easy thing to do and also not an easy thing to explain to people how important it is to donate blood. So the main questions of Sanquin uh, were, uh, can we increase the publicity of Sanquin? Can we uh, increase the awareness of donating blood as a really important good cause in the Netherlands? And the most important thing to do is, can we increase the number of Dutch men uh, uh, to become a blood donor and get them to the local blood center? So what I said before and what Siggy also explaining, we were thinking right away, okay, maybe the gaming domain is really interesting for Sanquin because in the Netherlands, but in that time, no other NGO has done something uh, in gaming or in esports. It's also a little bit and yeah, nobody knows is this working but we were really thinking okay we have to try this because maybe this is the holy grail for an ngo like sanguine to raise blood so we zoomed in uh, at the gaming community in the netherlands and we were asking them what are your main drivers to play a game but also to become part of a community like if you play league of legends why do you want to join that community? It's really interesting what I said, uh, because uh, one thing they always want is the in-game currency. So they were like, okay, if a brand partners up with, uh, with my favorite game, I really want to be part of a campaign where we get incentivized when, um, uh, uh, when we do something uh, for a good cause. We want to incentivize by something in the game. So that's a really good insight to keep in our mind when we uh, this, uh, develop this campaign. Also, they want to interact with heroes in gaming. So they all also said, if you do a campaign, please, uh, 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 please know that you really have to uh, have contact with the big heroes, like the big influence in the game. That also they are be part of a of a campaign like this. And the most important uh, for us was we uh, did research on all the different game communities, and the League of Legends community was. A community where the, uh, uh, the most highly educated people were in there, but also the most highly social involved people were there. And we also asked them, do you want to do something for society? And the main answer was yes, but we wanted to do it together. So 
we use all the insights of the research to develop a campaign in gaming for sampling. So our conclusion was millennials are gamers, but also gamers are involved. Uh, but then the main question in our creative process was, how are we going uh, to do this? How, to, how are we going to uh, uh, let this be uh, a great success for Sanguine in gaming? So we looked at the target group of League of Legends players in uh, the Netherlands, and that's totally the different, uh, 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 different than the uh, Sanguine database. So, uh, oh, <laughs> there's a television on. Um, but um, there are 250,000 people in the Netherlands are playing League of Legends. And for people who are not a gamer themselves, it's a really surprising high number. So that's good to know. 70% of the, of the people who are playing League of Legends in the Netherlands are male. So that's cool to see because it's totally the opposite than the existing uh, target group of uh, Sanguine. And they are really young, so the main uh, age of players in the Netherlands are 18 to 25. So that's cool and they are very high socially involved. Um, so we asked them, okay, you want to do something for society, but why are you, uh, aren't you a blood donor yourself? Um, nah, it's not fam they are not familiar with the uh, ex uh, existence of Sanguine. So they didn't knew Sanguine as a blood bank in the Netherlands. They were also not familiar with the urgency of donating blood because in the Netherlands it's, it's really normal when you get injured, there's enough blood for everyone, but it's not normal. You all, we always uh, are in the need for blood. Um, and they have never been asked to, uh, uh, to become a blood donor. So uh, they are really like, okay, if Sanguin is in our environment, in our channels in game, then if they ask us to become a blood donor, yeah, we know for sure we we will do it and we will go to the blood center. So that's uh, that are the main reasons for us to uh, really try to uh, to come up with a, a cool partnership for Sanguine to tap in the League of Legends community. And it was another thing for us that was yeah, it was the holy grail uh, for this partnership that in the game League of Legends, uh, if you play it you can score a first blood. And the first blood is like the first goal in a soccer match. Um, it's also here in this, uh, in this game. So if the first guy kills the other one, this, uh, on the screen uh, uh, they, show, they are showing the first blood and that's really a thing into the game. So we were thinking, okay, maybe we can take first blood out of the game to the real life of people, like, okay, you can not only give your, uh, take the first blood in the game, but you also can give your first blood in real life to save other people. So we called Riot Games, it's the developer uh, and the publisher of League of Legends, and we asked them if it's possible to become an official partner of the League of Legends European Championships. Um, yeah, and we, uh, we did it, so uh, we achieved to, uh, to realize uh, this partnership and, the, and the, LA, the LEC, the League of Legends European Championship, is like a Champions League in football, where the, uh, the, the biggest teams in League of Legends of all Europe are playing against each other, but also millions of people are watching it. And that's very interesting that we can tap in the viewership of League of Legends. So it's really cool to see that after in this picture you see when there was scored a first blood by the professional teams, all the viewers get a banner on their screen that, that says a first blood could save lives with Sanguine as, um, as the official first blood partner of League of Legends. And before, uh, before the matches, the analysts of the games were really uh, enthusiastic about this partnership and already say to all the viewers, okay, during the first blood, you see a banner. If you see the banner, go to uh, your local blood center and donate the blood. So it's really cool to see, I think, uh, how we manage this campaign flow. So first of all, we launched the campaign. And I have some videos after this slide to show it to you that uh, the first step of this campaign was to launch it with we hope with great awareness and great publicity. So we used one of the biggest influencers in League of Legends. Her name is Shox and it's a Belgian girl. She, spe she speaks Dutch and in the video, uh, uh, she in two worlds she speaks Dutch, but in the other senses she, she spoke English. But uh, she really launched the partnership uh, and that was, all, uh, that was the big bang in the Dutch League of Legends community that everyone 
no, uh, knew, okay, Sanguin is partner of League of Legends. So what we did then during the games of the European Championships, all over all uh, the first blood uh, moments in all the games, the banner was showed up. And at the analyst desk between the matches, like football, there were uh, people who are analyzing uh, the matches. Also, all, uh, also they were uh, talking about first blood and uh, the blood bank. Uh, and we uh, realized the mechanism that people, League of Language fans, when they donated their first blood, they get a code and they uh, could redeem a skin into the game. So that was really cool because if you were in the game and you put on your skin, you literally said, okay, I'm a blood donor now. And uh, the Riot Games had never been done it with a commercial partner at all. So for us, it was very cool and very surprising. They wanted to do that with us. Um, so Xavi, uh, if you uh, uh, start the video, you see Shox launching and introducing this partnership. Hi everyone, hello iedereen, Shox here. I am proud to announce a very exciting, unique partnership of Riot with Sanquin, the Dutch organization who is responsible for the Dutch bloedvoorziening. Riot and Sanquin both believe that this partnership can highlight the importance of blood and the possibility of donating your own. And like in League of Legends, to give your IRL first blood. Be sure to catch a Sanquin Dutch stream of the EU LCS Summer Split with Gamers First on the 8th and 9th of September. For more information, visit the link below. So for us, it was very cool. She used the word blood for cleaning. That's the English word of the Dutch word for blood supply, but it was a sort of in-game joke for all the Dutch people who knew, okay, she speaks Flemish, but she's using also a Dutch word. So, so that's cool because it was an international introduction of a new partner of the LC, uh, LEC. So that was really cool. Um, and in the next video, I'm going to introduce it a little bit because I think nobody, uh, also the Dutch people, are understanding what they are saying. We also realized that we could stream a local stream of the European Finals of League of Legends. And we uh, asked to the uh, shoutcasters from the Netherlands to really fit in the partnership of Sanquin in their commentary. Uh, and that was very cool because what you see in the next video is that there will be a, a score like a first blood. So the banners pops up and the shoutcasters are uh, joking to each other, go to the, uh, uh, go now, uh, leave the stream and go to a local blood center now. So Xavi, I think the second, yeah, the second video can be started now. Klaar gaat staan om wat focus te leggen op Fuzzy Chachi's Jogat. Laat daarmee zijn midden en zijn bot in een klein beetje alleen. En Amazing weten wat hij daarmee wil gaan doen, want die gaat richting de bot lane. Is nog niet een vision geweest en engage op Hillis Sang Israel. Upset wordt er eerst opgetraind. Hij heeft nog al zijn flash beschikbaar, maar hij moet hier disengage alleen. Amazing komt nu in de flank. Reckless is het eerste target. Hij staat nu tussen twee man vast. Hij heeft alleen zelf nog de damage. Hij heeft geen mana. Hij weet ook. Het is gedaan. De kill wordt gegeven aan Upset. First Blood hier gedoneerd aan Upset. <laughs> First Blood inderdaad gedoneerd aan Upset, maar gaat Upset ook First Blood doneren? Misschien niet. Ga dan naar myfirstblood.nl en doe dat voor Sunquin. Um, in ieder geval goed gespeeld daar van Schalke. We zagen dat Brock zou daar een klein beetje tegen verwachting in resources stoppen. Zo, het was really cool to see after this match. And this was actually the start of the campaign the first hundreds and the first thousands young people subscribed themselves as a blood donor and we sent out a press release because we didn't knew actually okay we are really happy with it but our uh, the, the mainstream media in the netherlands are getting how surprising this is and we were uh, we we knew that there were some uh, uh, and news uh, media attention because newspapers were writing about it and we tuned in at uh, the primetime journal in the evening of the Netherlands where two million people in the Netherlands are watching it every day uh, and uh, then the, the, the mainstream journal the first item in the journal was about us so I also brought that in the presentation so Xavi if you start the next uh, the next video is all about uh, the news anchor is uh, uh, explaining our campaign to 2 million Dutch people. Bloeddonoren werven met een computerspel. Dat klinkt gek misschien, maar het werkt. 
Bloedbank Sanquin heeft 300 nieuwe donoren gevonden. Heeft 300 nieuwe donoren gevonden via het spel League of Legends. Vooral mensen onder de 35 hebben zich aangemeld. Precies de groep waar de bloedbank naar op zoek was. So for us this was the start of a national media campaign all about Sanquin and all uh, about blood. And uh, the PR uh, people from Sanquin were saying, okay, we are doing for years now very serious campaigns and very serious researches, but this is the, the first time we got into the eight o'clock journal. So it's very cool, very cool to see. And that was, uh, again, the start of a really, really cool thing, because after this, thousands of people went to the blood center and really donated blood. So um, let's see. Oh, um, because if I go to the results of the Dutch campaign, we saw international media attention because not only the Dutch journal was uh, uh, was show, uh, showed it, but also in Russia, in Greece, and in the United States, uh, 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 journals were picking this up. Uh, okay, this is really cool. What's happening in the Netherlands right now? Uh, also on Reddit, so the totally other different uh, different target group. Young people were discussing from different uh, countries uh, what they are get uh, uh, as an incentive when they donated blood. So people from France were saying, "Okay, we get a free meal if we go to the blood center." People from Sweden were saying, "Okay, we get cinema tickets." And then the Netherlands, the Dutch guys were, "Okay, we get a skin in the game League of Legends." So that was really cool that our campaign started an in international uh, uh, discussion about blood donation uh, on a platform like. Reddit. So in total, there were more than 7,000 new blood donors in uh, the uh, League of Legends community who went to the blood center and get, uh, got a skin. There were more than 20 million impressions in the media in the Netherlands, and that was more than 100 times more than normally a Sanguine does during World Blood Donor Day. Uh, and we were very proud that we uh, won seven marketing awards in all different categories. Uh, with this campaign uh, because nobody ever thought about that this could be possible in the Netherlands to partner up with a global brand like Riot Games and League of Legends and there were uh, uh, some other blood supply organizations all over the world that uh, would be interested to do the same in their country uh, and that's the second part of my presentation because uh, like this uh, slide says, there was an incoming call from New York, from the blood centers of America, uh, and they were asking, okay, what you did in the Netherlands we, uh, is, is crazy. We have the same problems and the same challenges as Sanguine. Can you help us to do this? But not in the Netherlands, but in the United States. Uh, and I think everyone can imagine from, uh, uh, for an agency in the Netherlands, it's really cool to do an American nationwide campaign. So about the blood centers of america they are responsible for over 15 percent of uh, uh, all the blood supplies in the united states so every two people uh, in america who needs blood one of them uh, is uh, having a blood that is collected by one of the blood centers of america they are constantly looking for new ways to find donors and yeah, totally the same as in the Netherlands for St. Queen. They are specifically are trying to attract young donors in the age of 18 till 35. Um, but again, we had to uh, ask ourselves the question, how do we going to achieve this? Because the market there and uh, the possibilities to raise blood are quite different than in the Netherlands, because in the Netherlands you can only uh, ask people to go to the blood center. But in the United States you have hundreds of blood, uh, mobile blood drives, there are buses, uh, they come uh, to, to you, your university or your sports uh, uh, organization and you can uh, after your or during your work for example you can donate there so uh, also the different gaming and esports ecosystem is very interesting because for example in the Netherlands in that time you did not have big esports teams but the United States is the country with the most biggest and uh, uh, um, uh, the most uh, different esports team so that's all also a really interesting uh, angle to uh, uh, to look at if we uh, of when we were in the creative process of uh, the BCA campaign. 
so we could use, uh, utilize the mobile blood drives in activation, that was in our mind, and we could incentivize US donors more uh, than in Europe, because in Europe it's really like, okay, you can give them a skin, but that's the only thing you can get, uh, give away, and the United States are more free about it, so we got more possibilities to incentivize them. So we uh, thought about a two-step approach. It was really special to present it to BCA because we were like, uh, and BCA is the Blood Center of America, and it's our client, to uh, become partner uh, in the first two years of Team Liquid because Team Liquid is the most successful esports team of North America. They have uh, professional teams, I think, in nine different games. They are multiple, they became uh, a multiple world champion in League of Legends, in other big uh, esports titles like Dota 2 uh, and Counter Strike. So it's really cool because, like Siggy said, it's not only one target group. You have different target groups in esports. And in the US, we got the possibility to really tap into different esports communities with Team Liquid because. As a Team Liquid brand, they have the possibility to reach all the different gaming communities because they have professional teams in it. Um, also, it gives us a, the opportunity to organize a year-round activation program, so not only at a big event, but also uh, in terms of live streams on Twitch and YouTube or giveaways and, and meet and greet with the players. And uh, we could uh, incentivize new donors uh, with Team Liquid, Liquid branded incent uh, incentives. And that is really cool because Team Liquid is a very attractive brand. And now BCA have the opportunity with their members to give away Team Liquid stuff. So that was really cool. Um, so in the, in the few next slides, I uh, uh, will show you some videos and some photos of the Team Liquid campaign. And what we did uh, last year or this year during uh, COVID, there was a really need of plasma donation because uh, people who have had uh, COVID in the United States were really useful for BCA because they have already uh, they had already an uh, antibodies in their uh, plasma. So they really were asking League of Legends fans to go to the blood centers if they had Corona and uh, donated their plasma. Uh, that was a really difficult campaign because the government in the United States were saying, stay at home. And we said, uh, uh, with League of Nations, go outside and go to the blood center. So that was a little bit a tricky one, but really cool to do. Uh, so I will show you in the next few slides also the American in-game integration we did with BCA in the League of Legends program. And also we gave away uh, like in the Netherlands, an in-game skin when people went to the blood centers. Maybe good to know, um, the LCS is the biggest esports league of the United States, um, and they are the third most popular sports league in the age of 18 till 34. So uh, they are more attractive like the, uh, than the baseball league, for example. So for that, for BCA, it was really, really cool to involve uh, uh, in this in this league and in total more than 20 million hours were watched to the league and we were in the league with uh, with a call to action to a website to donate blood so that was really cool uh, and the final were uh, watched by uh, more than 400,000 young people so first of all we came with uh, um, we managed um, a partnership with team liquid uh, and we uh, uh, we activated with the uh, with the campaign heal for real because healing is in game in, in all the different games you have somebody who is the healer it's like a defender in soccer but then you call the healer and you are there to protect your teammates and to heal your teammates when they are injured so it's really cool to bring the offline and the online world together with this campaign so we ask all the people here for real and become a blood donor and this is one of the visual uh, we we used um so in the next video you see you, you are seeing steve and steve is the co-owner of team liquid so he's the big one of the two big bosses and he was uh, like uh, what shocks did in europe uh, this guy was uh, uh, making a video to all uh, his fans and he was asked okay guys june the 14th is blood world blood donor day then we announced that we are partner of uh, that bca is partner of team liquid so go to the blood center and for everyone who is uh, donating blood 
on that day, we have a special Red Team Liquid T-shirt. So that was very cool for all the fans because it's an exclusive item uh, and we uh, only gave it away in that week. Uh, so maybe, Xav, you can start uh, the video. I think it's number four. Today's the day. It's World Blood Donor Day. Go to our website. It's healforreal.us. You sign up and then you find a local blood center near you. You go, you donate your blood, and then once you do that, that center will provide you with a limited edition Team Liquid t-shirt. So go, sign up, you can help. So what happened in the Netherlands with the, with the great, uh, uh, with the great uh, publicity in the gaming media, this uh, again was all over the Team Liquid news. So it was, was very cool to see. And we did some cool activations. I, sh I will show you two now. We did a lot of more, but if you are interested in all the activations we did, call me or Ziggy and we will explain it uh, with great pleasure. So one of the things we did, we ran some uh, a traditional mobile blood drives totally into uh, the branding of Team Liquid. So it's very cool to see that we wrote to universities where we knew there were many Team Liquid fans. And normally they were like, okay, a blood drive. And I don't know if I am, uh, want to give blood. And now we were there with the red t-shirts and showing it to everyone and really ask everyone to come on the, in this truck and give blood. So this was a great success. And also for Team Liquid, because when the, uh, these buses were riding around the uh, uh, American roads, so for them, we were like riding billboards for the team. So that was really, really cool to do. Uh, another cool activation is this is the regular shirt and the regular kit of Team Liquid. This is the Counter-Strike team. Uh, and uh, what's really cool is that blue is the color of Team Liquid. So, uh, and we can't change it because uh, yeah, everyone knows blue, Team Liquid is blue always. But we were saying what happens if the team is showing up on a great stage in a stadium with red, blood red t-shirt, what happens then? And, and it, it was a little bit of discussion with them, but eventually everyone was like, okay, it's really cool to do. And we are not announcing it because we wanted to see what happened in the community. So online, everyone was like, okay, what are the, the, uh, do these guys in, uh, in red on the stage? They have, have to be blue. Uh, but it was very cool to see that all the players were asked after the game, why do you wear this T-shirt? And they were explaining the partnership with BCA. So there was really a run on this uh, kind of T-shirt because every Team Liquid fans wants this special T-shirt that we, all, uh, we only uh, made five of it. So I don't know where they are, six. I don't know where they are, but I think we have six really happy uh, Team Liquid fans who uh, have it on the wall in our sleeping room, I think. So, uh, again, if you are interested in the whole Team Liquid story, uh, uh, really, you, uh, uh, you have to call us because we, we can talk hours about it, um, uh, but not today. Um, and what we did this year is that we, we are really proud uh, of it because we were uh, partnering up with the LCS in the United States. And I brought some videos in it to show you what it's like uh, to have social calls, a really cool partner into the LCS stream. So this is the only thing we did is um, uh, uh, really try to increase the number of viewership in the LCS and really raise the awareness of all the people who are watching it for the uh, social calls like blood donation. So um, the next video you see is the start of a video. It's, like, it's during COVID, so there are, it's no audience. But it's like a television production with a very high uh, quality um, and it was broadcast on YouTube and on Twitch. And what you see in this video is the start of the match, the start of the program. And we were really proud that the first thing uh, Riot Games communicated to their audience was not it's uh, Team Liquid against TSM. No, it was we have a new partner and really you have to subscribe yourself as a blood donor. So, Xavi, I think you can show the next video, I think it's number five. We have a favor to ask of all of you at home. The LCS and the Blood Centers of America have partnered together in the fight against COVID-19. And if you have COVID-19 antibodies, we need your help. Check out the link on your screen for details on how to donate plasma and earn a free KDA Kaisa All Out skin. There's a limited number of skins left, so act soon. And thank you so 
much to all the fans out there who have done it so far. You are quite literally lifesavers, which puts you above me. Yeah, it's really cool to see that it is not only about branding or putting a logo uh, of BCA on, uh, on the screen during matches, but they were really explaining the, uh, um, uh, the urgency of giving blood during this COVID time and also putting the URL of our campaign in their stream. So for us, we were okay, like this is so great that also Riot Games is helping us to make this as big and successful as possible. And for all the people who uh, donated blood, they uh, they got this uh, skin, it's the Kaisa All Out skin for the people who want to know. But uh, it's really cool because uh, all the people uh, who are playing League of Legends, it's a very recognizable skin they could uh, receive when they became a blood donor. So it's also good to uh, good to know how did it look during the game when there was the first blood. And I think the next video show it. And it's really cool to say that in the Netherlands we uh, we had we had a message during a first blood, like a first blood could save lives. But here in the United States, um, uh, they also put the URL in it. So also during the games, people were asked to go to a website to subscribe themselves. So for us that was very special. Um, so, Xavi, the, the, the sixth uh, video you can start right now. Blabber was not even required, and Cloud9 is about to get a buy one, get one free. Two kills to kick it off in the grand final. Damn, Fudge, he doesn't even need the juggler. 1v2, let's go. Throwing down the gauntlet right off the bat here. Yeah, so it's it's cool to see the banner because it's yeah you can't miss it if you're looking at the game. So that's really cool. So um, I have one video left because, like I explained uh, a couple of minutes ago, between the matches, real life traditional sports uh, uh, analysts are really talking about it. But during COVID, all the different analysts were uh, at their home. Um, but also uh, in, uh, in this item of the total stream, they were really talking like, okay, guys, we saw a great match, but don't forget to go to your local blood center because we really, as a community, together, we can help people survive these COVID times. So you can start the last video if you want, uh, Xavi. With everything, though, that is going on in the world today, there is still a constant need for blood donors to save lives. The LCS uh, is partnering with the Blood Centers of America to encourage people to donate blood. With a simple internet search, you can still safely go to your local blood center to schedule an appointment to save lives for just an hour of your time. Give blood, save lives, please, I beg of you all. Time for another break, but when we return, it's game three of FlyQuest versus Evil Geniuses. We'll catch you here. So the last, last thing about this partnership is that we were also really proud that uh, the other uh, partners or sponsors of uh, the LCS and uh, that are really big, big brands like uh, uh, MasterCard and Grubhub, the, uh, we heard from Riot Games that also they say, okay, this was a really cool partnership because it's not only about branding and making money by uh, partnering some, something in esports, but it's also that you can really activate young people together to, uh, in, for example, increase the number of donors in a specific country. So that's was really cool. And if you are looking forward to the next year, because uh, two years ago we did Hill for Real with Team Liquid, uh, and it was a very cool start uh, and a very exciting steps in esports uh, and gaming for BCA. So what we did this year was the LCS partnership with a first blood save lives. We are now talking uh, 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 with some with some other partners and also existing partners with BCA to do uh, next year a really great new thing in gaming and esports to engage young people to go to the blood center. I, it's work in progress, but it's coming soon, I think. So. Uh, yeah, I am now with some sort of a teaser. Um, so that was um, nah, in 40 minutes our presentation about how we uh, uh, engage young people to uh, uh, to become a blood donor. So thanks, thank you for all uh, for the attention. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you for your explanation. I think oh. it's really really cool campaign. Thank you. <laughs> um, Kevin, um, 
we have some the, the first questions for you. The first one is, um, how did you get in touch with the community to get the gamers' responses on the questions that Sanquin had? Yeah, so uh, what we, uh, uh, Sanquin reached out to us, I think it was 2017, but like Sigi said earlier, we, all, we uh, already went into this community in 2013 uh, or 14, I think. So we went to uh, a lot, and I mean, and a lot of events and uh, uh, gaming parties, parties in the Netherlands and Europe, and we spoke to them. Uh, and uh, yeah, we were in some, uh, for example, uh, WhatsApp or uh, Discord groups. So we really could reach out every time we wanted. And I think that's one of the main strengths of uh, uh, our agency in gaming, that if we have a question, for gamers, it's one message and we get 10 answers. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, Dick says uh, that it was obviously a, a big success, uh, but what was, looking back, uh, the most difficult obstacles to get these results in the USA or, or the biggest challenges that you have to overcome? Uh, the, the, I think the biggest challenge is uh, to uh, learn and to show the traditional media how surprised uh, uh, or how, how do I say it, how new this is and how cool this is. Because in the Netherlands, as an agency, of course, we know the traditional media uh, media as well. So I can call a journalist from the biggest newspaper and explain it to him what's, what, what this is like and why they really have to show this, uh, uh, this campaign into their newspapers. But yeah, like Sigi said, we are sitting in the Netherlands here. Uh, the United States is a very big country with a very... Yeah, with a various of uh, uh, traditional media, not only on the internet, but also on uh, television and uh, 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 the different newspapers. So I think that to make it big, you, you do not only need the gaming community, but to make it as big as possible, you also need the mainstream media. And for us, I think that was the main struggle because um, um, yeah, that was, I think, to, to activate the young people. That was not our biggest challenge. But to get it as big as possible for the mainstream public, that was the, the, the most difficult thing for us. Mm -hmm. um, Colin says that, uh, okay, he says, very good guys, well done, very creative. Uh, besides the satisfaction of the, the good cause, um, what do you get out of this activation for your agency besides the exposure to the big players in eSports? Uh, let's see, what do you get? And what, what do you can you specific uh, specify the question? Because yes. is it, is it... yeah, that that uh, he's asking, what do you get out of this activation for your agency? What what are the, the benefits for your agency besides the uh, to be uh, to exposure the, the big players in the esports? Yeah, now we are we are not really representing uh, uh, big players in esports, so we are helping brands and other organizations to really leverage on the gaming community uh, because it's a very difficult um, uh, target group to reach and it's a really difficult target group to activate. So uh, we help organizations on a very creative way to come up with partnerships and campaigns to help them to yeah, leverage on the gaming and esports community. And this uh, specific, uh, of these specific, uh, 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 campaigns really helped us to uh, say to other brands or other NGOs or other, other organizations, uh, uh, look, we have proved that this is working and we have proved that we are really uh, willing and also we can, uh, we are be able to uh, uh, get your brand on a really authentic way in the, uh, on the, yeah, literally on the screen of gamers. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, obviously, so you think that um, you can create a, like a precedent with this type of campaign for other brands that would like to, to be present in other markets, for example? Yeah, so what, what we are doing, we, all, we really believe in partnerships mm -hmm. because, uh, for example, a gaming developer or a gaming team, they got a great audience or a great a huge database of players and we can really come up with uh, uh, campaigns and also with incentive mechanism that uh, gamers are really love uh, to uh, to join because if you all uh, only are doing the branding stuff it's like yeah it's 
well, why why is this brand here on my screen right now? Because, uh, but if you are telling the, the full story like we did with Shane Queen and a lot sense of America, it's really logical that they are there because it's the first blood thing, but also, okay, guys, you are young people. We really need you to save lives. So people are like, oh, it's it's we go further than all, uh, only branding, and we can incentivize people who are joining the campaign. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen a growth spike for your agency on the back of this already? Yeah, it was, no, it was, it was uh, literally two things I think that made uh, our agency grew in esports. Yeah, first of all. Uh, uh, when we launched Sanguine, I think now nowadays we we were working for we are working for 25 organizations and brands uh, in the Netherlands, in Europe, but also in the United States to to uh, uh, utilize the world of gaming. Uh, but also the total market of gaming is growing and has grown the last uh, couple of years. And we were really believed, that, uh, we, yeah, we believed that in 2014. But yeah, nobody was like, okay, uh, this is going to be eight times bigger than now. And now we are seeing that everyone wants to do something in gaming. But yeah, they are they are really in the in the first stage of discovering this. So they are like, okay, branding is cool, but we don't know how to really engage the, the public. And we were like, okay, now we can really prove like Saint Queen that we can also advise uh, uh, other brands to uh, to leverage on this world. Mm -hmm. Um, Colin says, why do you think it's hard to reach the gaming community? Now, uh, we always say it's not, it's not that hard to reach them because yeah, if you have money and you can, uh, uh, you can advertise on Twitch, for example, or you can uh, become partner of, uh, uh, of a big team or a big uh, uh, league. But I think it's hard to engage them because you are really... Uh, you you come into literally into their sleeping room because they are gaming uh, gaming there, and then on the screen your brand is there. So you have to really uh, have a great story with a great campaign that's uh, that adds something uh, in their environment. Because otherwise they are like, okay, what are you doing? You go away because this is really annoying. I'm playing a game with my friends, and why, for example, is uh, a Pepsi here? You know. So you have to really think twice when you start a campaign. You you really have to, you really have to test it with a yeah with a panel of gamers. Okay, guys, is this cool enough to go outside? And then you can start it. I think. <laughs> um, so uh, Kevin, finally from my side, uh, could you say that the, this has been your most successful partnership so far for the two basics uh, history on the two basics his history? I think this is the most uh, the most uh, yeah, the most people are are uh, talking about this campaign because we did it in the, uh, also in the United States, so it's mm -hmm. yeah, it's well known in the marketing world. Uh, but I'm also very proud on a on a very cool campaign we did also last year um, uh, to increase. Uh, uh, the the people uh, on uh, um, a secondary school in the Netherlands they lost the joy of reading and together with another uh, big uh, game publisher it's called Ubisoft we could uh, utilize the storyline of their biggest game uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla to uh, write new uh, stories in an in an in-game app and that was downloaded in three weeks by 80,000 young people so maybe that is for the next time to explain but that that's together with this uh, Sanguine and Blood Sense of America case the case where we are uh, the most proud of uh -huh. okay Kevin I don't know if um, uh, Ziggy is still there or he's gone okay yeah. okay uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah thank you very much for yeah for the presentation uh, yeah I really think it's really cool it's a really cool campaign it's something very nice to to explain to the community so thank you very much for your time yeah it was a pleasure and I hope we have uh... Uh, let you see that that yeah you can use esports and gaming in a complete other way than we usually think or or is has been done. So uh, I hope that uh, that inspires the people who are watching this uh, webinar or will, will uh, watch it afterwards uh, some days later. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you to you guys and um, uh, thanks to uh, everyone everyone who has participated. Um, we hope you have enjoyed the content as, as we did. Uh, you will receive uh, 
a link to the webinar recording so you will be able to watch the session again uh, if you like. And we invite you to stay connected for upcoming webinars. Uh, we'll come back soon with new sessions and you will find all the information in the virtual campus and in our social media channels. So have a nice day and see you soon. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye.